from Nairobi, Kenya. I'm Sharon Omoja. And uh, the talk we are going to have right now is How Street Complete Handles Edit by Tobias Zwick. Hello and welcome to my presentation. I'm Tobias Zwick and I want to talk about how the editor handles edits, how Street Complete handles edits. So um, it's, it has three sections. And in the first section, I will talk about the data flow, the rough architecture where um, the edits are sorted in. So that it is easier to follow, uh, let's do this iteratively. And a disclaimer, it's simplified. Uh, look at the displayed URL to see uh, a more detailed overview with the actual class names, etc. Okay. So, uh, in the beginning, we have this OpenStreetMap APA from where we get the data. And on the right side, we have the UI. We want to display the quests. So, the easiest infrastructure uh, architecture would be to just download uh, the, the OpenStreetMap data and create the quests out of that. And then the quests are displayed in the UI. And uh, when we do edits, when we answer the questions, then we simply upload the changes, the edits, and that's it. And this is a bit of a, like a, maybe a website architecture, but the problem is uh, what do we do if there's no connection? Um, if at the precise moment we want to upload the edit, the mobile connection is gone, then we have a problem, then the change is lost. So this is not really a good architecture for a smartphone app. Uh, also, if we close the app or just send it into background, it could be that all, all have to be, all has to be downloaded again. That's also not quite nice. So easy fix: we just persist the quests after we created them in a local database, and then whenever the quest database changes, we change the UI, and whenever uh, we create an we, we created an edit, then we persist it into the database, and whenever the edits database changed, we trigger the upload. So when the upload fails, the edit remains in the database forever. So you can uh, reboot uh, the smartphone, close the app, whatever. The uh, when you restart the app, the quest will be there again. Uh, this has been the architecture of Street Complete, the basic architecture of Street Complete, uh, till version 31, more or less. The problem here is that it's very simple, that's nice, but there's not real, really any live editing. So um, maybe you already changed data because you answered certain quests, but it's not reflected, the, the quests are not updated. For example, uh, the house numbers for buildings are only asked for buildings that, um, for certain building times, like uh, apartment buildings or uh, detached houses, but not for garages. So before you answer the building type quest, the house number quest will not appear. And after you answer this, then with this architecture, you still don't get the quest because you first need to upload the change and then download the change and then you see the quest. So that's not so nice. So what can we do about that? We do it like probably most uh, general purpose editors do it. We download the map data and then we persist that map data and don't um, generate the quests out of that immediately and throw away the map data, but have uh, a local copy of the downloaded map data, and whenever that map data update, uh, whenever that map data is updated, then the quests are updated as well. The rest is the same. So um, then the edits are not uploaded directly, but the edits also apply to the map data, and thus the map data changes, and thus uh, it is triggered that the quests are updated. So uh, are updated. That's why we have this loop that when you answered, uh, for example, for a building that it is indeed a detached house, then uh, the new quest will be unlocked. 
And finally, uh, from the map data, um, the things we changed are marked somehow, and those changed things are uploaded. For at least for Street Complete, this has a few problems though. Uh, first of all, it's now really um, difficult to undo the edits, or at least not that easy anymore. Before, we could just remove an edit, and the edit was removed. I mean, remove it from the database. Uh, but now the edits are applied to the map data, so we would need to reverse the edit somehow. And that needs code. We need to uh, code uh, how can we undo an edit. Uh, for simply tag changes, this is trivial, but imagine reverting or reversing uh, the splitting of a way. That's quite complex, and it's too bad that, it's, that this uh, is lost here. Also, when we upload changes, um, Street Complete usually solves conflicts automatically or tries, tries to do it. But if it fails, then the own edit is dropped. Now, if we upload all the edits we edit to map data in one chunk, and the OpenStreetMap API says, well, there's a conflict somewhere, then it's kind of difficult to find out, okay, where was the conflict? Uh, and uh, to solve it automatically, because the edits are chunked together in one big change set and not uh, atomic edits anymore. Um, and finally, also on download, when we scroll the map, Street Complete updates, uh, downloads the new areas. And um, then we have the problem, well, the download could over overwrite our local map data. That would be bad because uh, then we lost our edits or has to merge them somehow. And then, of course, there can be conflicts as well. So we have several points at which there could be conflicts and it's not trivial to solve them. Maybe we can do it a little better or a little easier like this. So it's basically the same, but the map data um, object is not changed from within the app. It's only ever updated from the OpenStreetMap API, either on download or update after an upload. The local map data object is updated every time the original map data updates or the edit edits update. So it's more or less a cache. Uh, it's the original map data and the edits applied on top of that. Yeah, and so this is how Street Complete does it now. Let's put it into the corner now and review what uh, is good about that architecture. <laughs> so first of all, it becomes possible now to work with map data offline with Street Complete. This is, uh, hmm. well, more basically it's a, a basic requirement for any general purpose editor. But Street Complete is not a general purpose editor and it was working before without this um, capability. But it's good to have it now because more things are possible with that. And on top of that, we have still this undo, easy undo. And third, um, the conflict handling is really easy because we still have these edits grouped as, or we have these single edits still. So if there's a conflict for one edit, then we can drop that one edit, but the others can still be uploaded. All right, so, but what is an edit and how are they applied? <laughs> so yeah, an edit is an atomic action from the user perspective, not from the technical perspective. This is a big difference. I will explain this on the Next slide, but now first, what is an edit? It contains um, the original map element that it refers to for conflict checking to see if something big happens so that the edit should not be applied. Then also the type of edit. There are different type of ed edits, for example, splitting away, deleting a point of interest, um, or changing some tags. That's the most common one. 
and also the most easy one. And then finally, of course, the diff, the necessary info and the minimal info that describes what is changed. So um, as promised, uh, the example for the split way, what is an atomic action? So we split the way here and right there, and that's the user action from the user point of view. Um, let's say we want to, we have this road and there's a parking lane on the left side. This is the geometry. And now let's, let's look at what uh, needs to be done from the technical perspective. First, we need to add the vertices at which we want to split the way. And then we modify the original way to only consist of the longest segment. That's the best practice anyway. And for the rest of the way, we create actually new ways and put all the tags, or at least the applicable ones. Maybe we shouldn't put step count, for example, in there, into these new ways. And then finally, this is <laughs> the most complex part. We need to update all the relations that uh, refer to the, to the way. And also there's uh, extra logic for from two relations. Uh, what this should show is that uh, an action from user perspective is very different from an action from the OSM API perspective or the technical perspective. What it also, also shows is that the action needs to uh, know some kind of repository of map data. Uh, in, this, in this case, the split away would need to know uh, the action, the edit action would need to know what are the relations that refer to this way and also all the nodes um, that are re referenced by this way. All right, so um, an, an, an example edit queue would maybe look like this. We um, change a tag for for a node, or we split away at a certain position. And maybe after that, we add another tag, or add another tag for, the, for one of the newly created ways. And of course, uh, one um, action is, can also be that several tags are changed. In this case, the user was asked uh, what kind of building is this? And the answer was, it's a storage tank. So several tags needs, need, need to be changed. So how does an edit create changes? Um, maybe you recall this other diagram a few slides back. Um, the edit is applied to um, both the local map data, but is also applied when uploading the change. And since we don't want to have a duplicate implementation, there's just the interface, the map data repository, and uh, both the local map data and the uploader for the OpenStreetMap API would implement that interface. And this map data repository supplies all the information the edit needs to do the edit. In this case, or for, for the uh, split way, I already mentioned the edit needs um, to know which relations refer to uh, the way and also all the nodes of the way. And uh, of course, also uh, the way itself. <laughs> um, so first, the edit will get the current version of the map data element that it wants to edit and compare it with the original version of the map data element to see if it can and should be applied. So it cannot apl be applied, for example, if the change was to um, set uh, the building type to apartments, but in the meantime, uh, the building type already has been changed to something else. Then it's a clear conflict and it cannot be solved automatically. Um, and it should not be applied if, for example, the um, geometry 
of the node changed or the way changed um, significantly. For example, if the node was moved more than 20 meters or something, maybe it's now a completely different thing. Sometimes um, mappers do something like this. So they reuse nodes and other map data elements for other things. Um, or for example, if a way has been split, then it should also not be applied. Yeah, and finally, after deciding if it should reject or um, apply the edit, uh, the only thing the edit does is to uh, return the updated elements. And what will be done with this uh, with these updated elements is up to the uh, the uploader or the local map data. So the local map data would just get those elements and put it into its uh, uh, local store, and the uploader would get those elements to upload them to the OpenStreetMap API. All right, section three. So how can we undo and how can we revert? Maybe you know that Street Complete um, can also undo edits that have already been uploaded since forever. All right. So first of all, uploaded edits are um, not cleared from the database, but they stay in the queue. But they are marked as uploaded um, so that they are available for undo even after upload in the UI. So you, you see what you've done. So how to undo an edit. Let's say the user answered that he can't find the bench he was asked to locate. So the bench will be deleted. But seconds later, or minutes later, or hours later, he discovered that the bench is still there. Maybe only at a slightly different position, or he wasn't looking properly. So he wants to undo this edit. And uh, to, to undo this edit, there's just one um, information that needs to be acquired. Was it already uploaded? If not, then we can simply delete the edit. When the edit is deleted, then the local map data is uh, notified of that change and thus uh, updates its data model. And thus the quests are also updated and the, 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 the quest that asks for the bench, if it still be there, if it's still there, will be notified, will be recreated, I mean. And if it has already been uploaded, uh, then we also delete the edit, um, but we add another edit to the queue of to be uploaded uh, edits uh, marked as a revert because revert uh, edits should not uh, appear in the UI because you sh shouldn't be able to undo reverts. So here you see um, how it looks like in the UI. The, Edit history. You can you you can undo any edit in any order. And again, for a more detailed overview, see this URL. And now I'm happy to take your questions. Thank you, thank you so much, Tobias, for that for that session. Uh, and now we will move directly into the into the Q&A session. And we have various questions here for, for the speaker. Uh, the first question is, uh, probably the most frequently asked question is, are there any chance for an, an iOS app? Like, is that something the OSM Foundation could sponsor? Um, if there is a chance for the iOS version, you mean? Or um, can, can you repeat the question? Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, the question is, uh, uh, is there a chance for an iOS app, like having Street Complete on iOS phones? Uh, like, is that something that the OSM Foundation could sponsor? Ah, OK. Um, then I got it right after all. Um, well, I last year I estimated uh, how long it would take to port an iOS version of the app. Basically, as the app is written in Kotlin, and Kotlin can be compiled to native code as well, um, some code can be reused for the iOS version, but 
uh, anything regarding UI or anything regarding the system, like the database or um, all this all the system APIs would need to be done from scratch. So it's quite a lot of work. Um, I estimated very, very roughly estimated that it will take six months or two people to work on it. Um, so right now the idea is more or less sitting there because uh, it's a lot of time to spend and of course then a lot of money. I'm already busy with uh, maintaining the Android version. So what needs to happen that an iOS version can be made would be that, well, there is someone, maybe an iOS developer who will say, okay, I will, I will do this. And that this person somehow either uh, does it for free or has some kind of funding, maybe from the OSMF, maybe from somewhere else. Um, and afterwards, of course, is interested in uh, maintaining it because maintaining this app is, is and I'm an iOS, I used to be an iOS developer, so I, I can tell uh, it's, it's very time intensive to uh, maintain an iOS app, especially that. So yeah, we would need to find someone maybe from the community who would, who would do it and then secure funding somehow. Okay, that's great. Yes, and the next question. Are there plans? Yeah, are there plans to enable mappers to split and join ways? Uh, like one of the minor inconveniences that where I live, sometimes streets are broken and the need merging of multiple lanes. All streets are connected to other streets in a single long lane that needs breakup of a line. So is there a plan to enable mappers to split and join ways in such situations? Well, splitting ways um, is already possible. I mentioned this in a talk. Um, so if, let's say, there is a street that has two lanes all over, but in front of the traffic light, there are, there are three lanes now because there are some turn lanes. You can split it already. Um, but merging merging ways is not possible. Uh, you mentioned splitting lanes. I'm not sure what, what you mean, um, but maybe the question was for ways and not for lanes. So merging lanes, uh, emerging ways is not planned because um, Yeah, I mean, there's no real reason for it to merge ways. Uh, if you are asked for one little piece of way, okay, how many lanes does it have? Let's say two. And then for another piece of uh, way, how many lanes does it have? And you will also say two. Then maybe the uh, person using the app would uh, think, okay, th then I can merge these ways because they are the same. But this is not always true. I mean, uh, Street Complete doesn't uh, show all the information that is tagged on the way. There may be, uh, may be other differences between the ways. So um, merging ways will probably never be possible in Split Complete. Oh, okay, thank you. Uh, the next question is, uh, did, uh, do you ever consider creating a possibility to edit features that change in reality? For example, highways that are, is lit now or lanes that change on a road. Yeah, I think I've also had the same problem when like you want to map something and uh, maybe a restaurant is indicated that it's somewhere on street complete, but in reality that restaurants do not exist any longer. So is there a possibility to edit these features that have changed over time? Well, what is possible already is to delete the feature if it doesn't exist anymore. Um, and oh, it is possible to uh, leave a note. Mm, but this direct editing you would see from other editors like Vespucci or uh, GoMap, et cetera, uh, is not possible in Street Complete. So uh, yeah, for example, the, the shop went away. It's not there anymore. Then you can answer it's, it's not there anymore. And the um, shop note will actually not be deleted in this case. 
but retect so um, disused column drop equals yes, I think, and all the all the other tags, uh, opening hours, etc., will be removed. But the note will still be there. And next, and maybe half a year later or so, Street Complete will again ask the user, "Okay, the shop has been uh, vacant. Is there something else now?" And the user can answer this and can say, "Okay, there's a bakery now here, or whatever." And it uses the ID presets to translate from the um, from the word you enter, like bakery or supermarket, to to what tags to use for that. Um, and if there's any more complex situation, like oh, actually the shop still exists, but it's uh, not uh, at the right position. It's actually ten meters further down the road. Then, um, then you would need to leave a note and say, look. The shop is at house number 46 and not 48 or something like that. I, I hope yeah. um, this answers the question. I also would join the chat in case someone says that's not what I asked. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, ah, yeah, the last question was more meant to be that if there could be a possibility that I can redo solve tasks. Redo solve tasks. Um, well, you can undo your uh, edit and then redo it uh, in another way. 